Yeah, all right. I thought I'd take the opportunity to talk to you earlier. Um, it's work. It's a joint work I did with my students Leon and Tanger, and also with my professor Ben Schneider. And it's actually a work in a larger project uh, in, in the context of a digital humanities project where our job as a computer scientist is to develop so-called distant reading devices. And this basically means um, information systems which can be used by people to um, analyze and explore a large number of document collections without much close reading. And in one such device, um, we presented the paper and it's based on a faceted search system which we modified a little bit to the task and in which respects this uh, we modified this, this, um, this I'm going to tell you in the next few minutes. Uh, so our faceted search system, that's basically a set of documents and on top of it we have facets. And each facet comprises several um, facet terms, which in turn are connected to the documents they are relevant for. Now what the user can do with this is um, can select specific a uh, specific facet term, and then the system will uh, filter out all but the documents which are relevant for this uh, facet term. So document filtering is a use case, but there is another use case which we are very interested in, and it allows to explore the term relationships between um, the facet terms. So once we have the, the, the document, uh, the, also the facets are updated and um, the user can explore the relations. Now, um, the big limitation for our use case with this classical method search system is that term relations can only be explored on document level. So two terms are, are connected if there is a document which they share. But for our use case, um, the users want to get deeper inside the, the content of the of the documents and want to explore all sorts of relationships. So, to accommodate for this use case, what we do is we say that um, the terms are not connected only to documents, but to specific regions inside the documents. So now what could happen is that simply again, the user selects A2, then in this document B4, also, we have these two terms appearing here. They don't overlap in their span, which means now we have no direct relationship between A2 and B2. In the other case, we still find uh, an overlap, so these two are still related. So this, um, this solves um, this sub-document uh, term relationship problem, but it also introduces a new problem which becomes apparent if you look at a third facet. The third facet has, um, has an element, uh, has a term C1, and this points here into a small span. This span is, um, is inside the green one, the B1, but does not uh, intersect with the, uh, the span of A2. If we apply it like the, the procedure just uh, again, this would mean that um, so if the user selects A2, this would not intersect with C1, so we would, wouldn't consider this related, this term, to A2. However, it is a common use case that uh, users of our system would consider this actually, um, these terms related because they both appear inside this, this green uh, span. So there's an indirect term relationship and we want our system to be able to cover these indirect term relationships. So um, for this we um, introduced the concept of uh, facet pipes, which basically means that we don't consider the 
the facets on top as a, as a set, but as a sequence, and the user can decide which facet goes into which position of the sequence. So to evaluate the sequence, we would start with uh, the first facet, would look for um, all the spans of this, this term, and then would uh, find all the green spans which intersect with this facet. And then from this green span, we look again for the intersections with this uh, third facet, and now we would find actually that this term is connected to the first term, A2, if we put this facet B into in between, in the middle. Now, uh, a final, um, uh, a final detail on this is the question: How, uh, which spans of B1 do we take into account for the intersection with C1? And there are two um, possibilities which both make sense. Um, the first one is to say we only take those spans which have an intersection with A2. And the second one would be to say we also take into account all the terms, uh, all the spans of B1, because there is at least one intersection with A2. So um, to give the user the possibility to choose, to introduce the concept of facet scopes, and say if the scope is one, we only will be taking into account all spans of B1. If the scope is two, we only take into account as bands which also have an intersection with A2. Um, this is the concept we, we introduce and then we also implement it um, in, in a prototype where we did a user study with. So here what you can see is that so we have here our um, our passive pipe it has only one element and um, we can choose, for example, foreign credits as the first element, search for ICTIR, then we can add plus, um, by pressing plus, add a new facet and select publications, which gives us all ETH publications, and we can add a new facet authors, which will give us all ETH authors, and how many papers they have published at the conference, and then, for example, we could add another conference facet with a scope then of only one, which would give us all conferences ETF authors published. And of course, all authors published at ETF, but we can also see that over half of the authors published at there, for example. The user study, um, I, we can talk about it in the, uh, in the poster session more, but the point I want to make is that once the users um, understand how to use the system, um, they appreciated the, the added value of our system over uh, the classical classification. That's it.